The other way to create sections and elevations is to create dynamic or live sections and elevations. In order to do this we're going to need to create the 3D information for the slab and for the footings. So we need some extra layers. We can use our navigation palette for this and create a new layer called foundation. So just up here we're going to call this foundation and we're going to edit this after creation. Okay. I want the elevation to be minus 16 inches so it goes below my slab and then I want my layer wall height to be 12 inches so that it comes up to the underside of my slab. I'll just turn that off, click OK and so now I've got foundations. I need to see the level one at the same time so I'm going to turn that level on I'm going to draw my foundations but I want to be able to see the other one as well. It might be easier if you use layer options, grey snap others. So we can see our walls, we can snap onto them, but we know they're in the other layer. Back to our wall tool, walls, and here we're going to create a wall which is a foundation wall. So it's going to be 8 inches thick. Edit our wall attributes, should all be by class. So class style, colour by class, class style, colour by class and thickness by class as well. Click OK. Let's look at our insertion options. So that's going to be the layer wall height and the bottom bound is going to be our layer elevation which is minus 16 inches. So that should give us a 4 inch wall. We've got a class for this, wall foundation. If you haven't got a class for this already, create one. Click OK and now I can draw my foundation walls. So these foundation walls line up with my walls above. I want to use that mode. Click. So I'm going to each corner, click, click, and click again. Let's just have a look at my classes. I might find that class is turned off. There it is. Let's turn on my wall foundation class. And if we change to a three-dimensional view, like a isometric view, we should see that my foundations are sitting below my walls and there's a bit of a gap there. Back to a top plan view. Right click. Layer options active only. Now what I could do is to draw a slab. I'm going to use a rectangle tool for this. So click, click, model on the menu bar, AEC and floor. So where's our bottom Z? If you remember, the layer is set to an elevation of minus 16 inches and the layer wall height is 12. So that must be 12 inches or 300 millimeters and the thickness is 100 millimeters or 4 inches. Click OK and now what we should see is that one is sitting on top of the other. I've just used a keyboard shortcut to get to my right isometric. It's key 3 on my numeric keypad. So there you are. You can see there's my slab sitting on top of my walls. Back to grey snap others because we still want to see the other walls and the B key. Remember we've also got some load bearing walls through here which we've forgotten to draw. So let's go back to our wall tool, back to our center line mode and then find the center of that wall there, come across and double click. We also need the center line of this wall and don't forget you can also use your Z key to zoom in temporarily coming down the center of that. Now if it's not on the center, delete that and start again. And you might find you have to zoom in. B key, down the middle there, down the middle there. Now what I need to do is to join all those walls together. Remember the wall join tool. We're going to use it in the T join mode. That wall to hold down the B key, that wall. That wall to that wall. This wall to, and you have to hold down the B key, that wall and that wall to that one. Select those walls and send those to the back. Send to back. Ideally this needs to be on a class, this floor object. How about a new class for slabs? Structure slab. So use it creation and we're going to have a thick line for that slab. Click OK. 
we have most of the information we need. So let's start to create some viewports. Let's turn on our roof. Let's turn on show snap others. So we can see our roof. We can see our foundations is there. Let's drag that down. So we've now got everything in the right order. If we change to a front view, so active view, let's go front and draw a rectangle over it. Remember this rectangle has to be not on the 3D plane but on screen plane. And then we can go view, create viewport. And this can be our front elevation. So I'm going to say always do the selected action, yes. So what should we call this? Let's call this our south elevation, that's what it really is. And I'm just going to select all of that and copy. So Control C or Command C. So what layer do we want? We need a new sheet layer for this. So let's create a sheet layer called 010 and we'll call it Elevations. Let's give it a number and a title. I'm going to go Paste, which is Control V or Command V. What layers do we want to see? We want to see everything except the sections and elevations. What classes do we want to see? Mostly everything except for the ceiling and non-plot. OK. What view do we want front? What rendering do we want? Head and line. And what projection? Orthogonal. If you choose perspective, it'll be a perspective elevation. We really want it to be an orthogonal elevation. Click OK. And there's my elevation. And I can now change the scale to 1 to 100. Move that where I want. And there's my first elevation. Now it's got the dash red border, which means it needs updating. Click on the Update button, and there's my elevation. So it's got almost all the information that the static elevation had, but it's live. So if I move the doors or move the windows, this will update really quickly. We could go back to our design layer and use that to create a section viewports, but we can also do it directly here from this elevation. We do need to change our workspace though. Tools, workspaces, and I'm going to change to Architect. If you've got Landmark, change to Landmark, or if you're using Spotlight, change to that. Because what we're going to use is a section viewport, and the only way we can use that is if we change to one of those designer workspaces. Select your elevation, view on the menu bar, and create section viewport. So decide where you want your section, go right through the model, click, which way do we want to look, click again, click once more, and that will create a section. And it'll put our reference here on our elevation. What do we want to call this? Section AA or section one. Create on layer elevations, that's fine. It's going to be drawing number two. And this is section A A. What scale? 1 to 100, but we can always change it later. Let's look at our advanced section properties. So the extent of our section line is going to be infinite. It's going to go right through the model. So it might be a good idea to limit it to the section line length. That is the length that you cut through here. The depth range is how far back do you want to go. Uh, infinite might be good. We could also use our height range infinite. We also have the ability to choose attributes. Do you want to have them merged together? In which case we've got a section style. It's a class I'm going to have to change. I'll show you that in a second. Click OK. Click OK again. And there's our section. And if you want to change the scale of the section, you can. You can change that to 1 to 50. I'm going to grab it by its corner there, line up. It's probably easier if I grab the bottom corner, touch the building that's already there, and then line up with that. Now you might notice that my section line is very fat. It's because it's a class. So let's look at our classes. And we're looking for a class called Section Style. There it is double click. Lots of people don't like this red fill so why don't you change it to a light grey make that not quite as thick and then, and then click OK. 
I also like to have another class similar to this one. I'm going to duplicate that and then edit it. And this is going to be called Section Faded Style. What I'd like to use this for is to create a faded out view of my elevation beyond the section plane. What I'm going to do is give that a grey line. Click OK and OK again. So on this section we've got the ability to control the graphic attributes of the objects beyond the section plane. Under my advanced properties and attributes here I can choose a section faded style for the line and for the fill of objects beyond the section plane. And there you can see they're sort of faded out, so my windows are faded out. So this is kind of a cool trick. There's another really good way of making a section viewport. If I go back to my level 1, change to an isometric view, and I've got a concept in Victor, it's called a clip cube. Now clip cube is great because it focuses on a specific part of the building. That's my clip cube. You see there's a clip cube going around my building. If I use my selection tool and I select the clip cube, I can click on a face of that clip cube and pull it through the building. Now this looks great if you render this in OpenGL. So rendering OpenGL. So there you can see I can now move my clip cube back and forth and choose where I want to create my section right click on that face you see it's turned red so I can right click on that and I can say create section viewport so this is going to be section B-B B-B I'll call the section B-B it's at 1 to 50 I've got my render settings, my advanced properties again, and here under attributes I've chosen section style, faded attributes, and the extents. All of these figures are actually taken from that clip cube. Click OK, click OK again, and there's my section generated from the clip cube. And if I want that to be a different scale, I can just choose it from the pull down menu. Whenever you see these red borders, the objects need updating. Click on the update button and there they are. Now any time that I change my model, move doors or windows or any of that sort of stuff, all I need to do is to update these viewports. If you want to add information to these viewports, remember that you can right click and you can edit the annotations and add additional information to your viewports. So if you want to add skirtings or hatching or walls or notes, just edit the annotations and add those to your sections and elevations.